When we think about La Cosa Nostra, we associate their organized crime with large cities like New York, Chicago, and Las Vegas. But just 300 miles east of the Big Apple is Buffalo, New York, and the crime family based here controls a vast swath of territory that extends from Ohio into Canada. And for more than 50 years, it was run by one of the most powerful bosses in America, Stefano Magadino. Known as The Undertaker, Magadino was born October 10, 1891 in the Castelmarice del Golfo region of Sicily. His family there was part of a mafia clan, and when war broke out in 1902, the 11-year-old was sent to live in America for his own safety. He settled in Brooklyn and fell in with the recently formed Castelmarice crime family. This group would later evolve into the Bonanno family. In August of 1921, a man by the name of Bartolo Fontana turned himself into New York police, saying that he was responsible for murdering Camilo Caioso a few weeks earlier in New Jersey. He claimed that he was pressured to do this for the Good Killers. The Good Killers was made up of several members of the Castelmarice family, and Caioso was killed in retaliation for the murder of Magadino's brother in Sicily back in 1916. Fontana did the crime because he feared that if he didn't, they would kill him. Now he was afraid that he's going to be murdered for being a loose end. The police set up a sting operation where Fontana told Magadino that he needed to leave town because the cops were on him. But first, he needed money to go on the lam. Magadino agreed and they met at Grand Central Station where $30 was exchanged. Magadino was then arrested and held in custody, but New Jersey declined to charge him with conspiracy to commit murder and he was released. After this, he fled to Buffalo to lay low and he became linked up with the crime family there who was also from Castelmarice del Golfo. Magadino quickly rose to the family's ranks and when boss Joseph DiCarlo died in 1922, Magadino succeeded him. In the 1920s, Magadino's legitimate business was operating a funeral home in Niagara Falls. He lived in the small town of Lewiston with his wife Carmela and their four children. His son Peter would go on to become a maid member of the family while his three daughters all married maid men as well. He was also one of the richest mobsters during Prohibition, with the location of his territory next to Canada, giving him an advantage to smuggle liquor into the country. During the Castelmarice War, he was targeted for assassination by Joe the Boss Masseria, but there was little fighting in western New York because Magadino kept tight control of his empire. He was able to funnel money and supplies to Salvatore Maranzano in New York, who was working with his cousin, Joseph Bonanno. The war ended in 1931, when Lucky Luciano murdered Maranzano and created the commission. Magadino was given a seat on the board. As Prohibition ended, he diversified his family into gambling, loan sharking, labor racketeering, and other traditional mob activities. He was an old-style boss that preferred to be insulated and out of the spotlight. During the 30s and 40s, many people did not know who he was and were ignorant of the power he wielded. He presided over a golden age for his family, where they also diversified into many legitimate businesses as well. He survived two assassination attempts, one in 1936 where his sister was killed, and the other in 1958. It was after the Appalachia meeting that law enforcement and the public started to become aware of Magadino and his organization. Investigations, along with the testimony of Joe Valachi, revealed him to the public to be the center of Buffalo's organized crime. As the law tightened their surveillance, the family's revenues dropped as a result. Between 1962 and 1968, the funeral home he owned was bugged, with the FBI having over 76,000 pages of transcripts regarding the business discussed there. As a result, Don Stefano and six other people were arrested and charged with crimes related to gambling and racketeering. The charges were later dropped due to a judge ruling that the wiretaps were illegal and inadmissible. But these events tipped off the organization that they were under the microscope. Everyone in the family remained tight-lipped and discreet, but in 1968, an FBI search of Magadino's son's apartment found $521,000 in cash hidden in a suitcase. This fostered some resentment in the rank and file that the boss had been staying fat while everyone else starved. He was in his mid-70s at this point, and despite law enforcement's insistence that the raid started to tear the family apart, they stayed together and remained strong. Magadino continued his reign into the 1970s without being charged with any crimes. He died of a heart attack on July 19, 1974 at the age of 82.